All right, guys, so on this week's field tip, we're gonna let JD Jones of Pinnacle Self Bows show us how to build one of his signature handle wraps. I use nine to 12 ounce latigo leather. The length of this all depends on the length of, your, of, of the bow that you're building, the handle. So how long you cut your leather strip is gonna depend on a couple of things. Like JD says, it's gonna depend obviously on how long your handle is, but it's also gonna depend on what type of handle you have. Now, uh, one big difference between the bow that I have here in my hand and the one that JD makes is that he usually makes a straight gripped bow, whereas this is more of a pistol grip. Now, obviously you're gonna have to have more leather to cover a larger surface area. And this pistol grip here, because it's deeper down here at the bottom, just requires a little bit longer strip. And so if you're making handles of different shapes or different depths, you're just gonna have to play with it a little bit to get your strip the proper length. Now, if you're gonna put one of these handle wraps on your bow, you're gonna wanna make your handle a little bit smaller than you normally would, because when you put this wrap on there, it's gonna build your handle up a little bit and make it bigger. If the handle feels like it's a little bit small, that's gonna be perfect for you. If the handle feels perfect for you without a handle wrap on it, it's gonna to be too big once you put the handle wrap on. It's gonna to be too thick. So I always make mine just a little bit smaller because once you put the handle wrap on, this is gonna add about a, an eighth to three sixteenths thick, thickness around it because of the bulb that's in the center. So what I do is I cut them in one inch strips and then I cut a taper about five inches on the same side. This is mine, or mine for a four inch handle and it's about an inch and a quarter thick, deep. The back is rounded, not cut through the growth ring, but the back is rounded, the belly's rounded. Everything is rounded. You don't want a square handle for this type of, type of wrap. Mine is 19 and a half inches and that's for a, a four inch length handle. But I, I do a dry run. Once I get this done, cut off, sanded, everything I dry run it I tape it wrap it around the bow and then if it goes it get if it's if it's if it's right at the edge it's going to be perfect at four inches if it's longer because when you first tape this when you first glue this on with contact cement on both the handle the, the bow handle and the deal when you when you when you glue this on I pull it and it stretches so it's going to stretch a little bit longer once you get it finished so uh, like I said it's all about just doing dry runs and, and stuff because once you glue this on around, it's, it, you can take it off, but you'll, you'll have to acetone, clean all the glue off and stuff to start over. So always do a dry run first before you glue it on. So I'm gonna start showing how I do this. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use, I think this is 80 grit. You can use 36 grit. 36 grit is a little bit coarse. Uh, if it's if it's a brand new belt, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and I'm gonna sand the belly of it a little bit, get it where it's more pliable. So I'm gonna start that first, then I'll go with with beveling or skiving the edge of the of the of the edge, and I don't I don't take off nothing in the center. That's where you get the bulbous at. You just do it like a quarter inch on each side, but I, and I use a belt cleaning to uh, you know for the pressure to hold down. So I'm gonna sand the belly of it first here. I'm going to start skiving the edge with this, with the deal here. I'm going to put pressure on the edge. And there's a fine line of when to stop before you burn the edge out. You don't want to burn, burn the, uh, the edge. You want to get it a sharp edge. You can see right all, already right there, it's, it's already getting sharp. And I'm already, you can see where I've took off material right there. But you want all this down here the same as this right here. You want it sharp. Whoops. Knowing when, when to get off of it. So you just want to just do this as slow as you can. And I'm not in the middle, I'm on the edge here. As you can see, I'm using the edge of this. I'm getting a, getting a fine line here. As you can see, I'm getting that sharp edge right there. A lot of people think when they see my wrap, they'll think that I put something underneath the center of it, you know, because of it's, it's protruding in the center. It's more pronounced. All it is is the center of the leather because I'm, I'm not taking any 
leather off on the belly in the center of this Latigo leather here. So of course I'm doing this as my right hand. Okay, I've got that. Right there, Clay, you can see that's that's real sharp. And then look at there. I, it's real sharp here, almost all the way down. I gotta turn it over on the other side and do this to get that side because I've got to almost to pass the, uh, three quarters of the way. So now I'm gonna turn it over and do this side with my left hand. It's harder with my left hand. This is more critical here because I'm not a left-handed person. You just, I gotta go a lot slower, but I've got it almost all right there now. Once you get closer to the end here, towards the taper, it's okay for the taper to be completely flat because it's gonna be the final spot where you, what, that you glue down and you, you, you don't touch it, you don't grab a hold of it. So if you get it all the way flattened on the end, it'll be perfectly okay. Like this right here, I'm gonna flatten the whole end. And sometimes you'll have some feathering, like at the end right here. You can get, you can get, you can get a, your scissor and just barely cut that. So now, I've got that, as you can see. That edge right there, about a, it's a little more, more than a quarter of an inch. That is all sharp and this is thick here and that is thin to an edge compared to that right there. This is gonna look just like that. Now I've gotta turn it over. I'm gonna do the other side now. now. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on here. It might not look like it. But like I said, it's a fine line of, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing that and a fine line of when to stop. So this piece of rubber that JD is using is called a sanding belt eraser. And you can usually get them from anywhere that uh, sells woodworking supplies. Getting pretty close here. I got it right there. Okay. Now that I'm done with that, as you can see, both the tapers, you can see both the tapers are on the, this is the same side. Now, if I can have this bow here. For a right-handed bow, bow, for somebody to grip it, I always start on the back side of the leather, of, of, the, of the handle. As you can see, my handles are fairly, fairly narrow and they're not real thick. But you start on the back side First off, you glue with, with contact cement, wellwood contact cement or whatever. You glue the whole four inches or so. You can go past this. And then you glue the whole leather strip. You glue all that. You set it down for 15, 20 minutes. I, I tend to use a heat gun to heat it up. It heats it up, it dries it fairly quick. So what I do is I'll start to, I always start to tell right there and I wrap it around and I do, like I said, I do a dry run. I always put a piece of tape right there and I just do a dry run first and wrap it all the way around and see if it gets to ends, the tail ends there. The reasoning why you taper it like that, you always start at the non-taper where you, where you don't cut the five inch taper. You always start that at the top. If you start it the opposite way, it's not gonna lay in. It will not lay in correctly. And then once you finish it, the taper is this side, this is the finished side, so it'll be square. So that's what you do, you start that, you wrap it, you wrap it, and get it, like I said, you wrap it, and you, you're constantly pulling it, and you get it right at the edge, and once you get that done, you can either get a burnishing tool, or a screwdriver, or an antler, like Gary has here, and you can get it right here, this deal here, and you, you smash that, you squeeze that in, and you're just, you're just smashing it set, so, it, so everything will be down. And that should be how the final product looks like right there. And then if you want to clean it up, you got, if you got glue sticking out, just get you some mineral spirits. Don't use acetone, acetone will take off the color, but use some mineral spirits. And that's how you do it. That's how I've done it since the late 80s. And I don't know, 
it, to me, it's a whole lot more simple or simple wrap than one that you lace and you, you and I still do that if the, if the customer wants it. But to me, this is more, it's, it's just more of a comfortable grip because your your fingers was going to be at, at all at, at, at the grooves. Positive. Positive deal, yeah. If it's a left hand, you start it on the back side, but you always start the glue on the back side of the, on the opposite side of the rest, the shelf area or whatever. So there you go. Now this is my first and only attempt at one of these handle wraps and I, I'm going to go ahead and admit to you that JD's looks a lot better than mine does. But I think with a little bit of practice you can get very good at this and make some very cool and comfortable uh, grips for your bows. Now I want to mention one other thing about this bow. Uh, it's a two-piece bow and I show you how to build this on the Patreon site. Now, I've gotten a couple of questions about these. I've had guys make them following that tutorial on there and uh, have told me that they're making noise when they're shooting them. Now, that's one thing about these bows is when you shoot them, uh, they will creak a little bit. Now, that can be a problem, but there's a very easy and simple way to fix that. All you have to do is take a little bit of string wax or even just the paraffin off of a candle and rub it on the tendon here, and that'll kind of fill in some of those voids and lubricate it a little bit. And once you do that, put it back together, string it up and start shooting it and you shouldn't hear any more creaking at all. I wanna thank everybody that signed up for the Patreon site. It's you guys that are making these videos possible. I really, really appreciate it. And for the other guys that are not signed up for it, if you want to get into more uh, exclusive uh, bow building material, behind the scenes type stuff, uh, vlogs, um, go and check the site out. It's patreon.com forward slash Clay Hayes. Go and check it out. You can sign up for just a few bucks a month, help support these videos, and then also get some pretty awesome uh, exclusive content that nobody else sees. So with that, appreciate it, and we'll see you there.